Hey guys, uh, so we're going to go ahead and talk about in this video how to upgrade your radio receiver or radio and receiver. Uh, there's going to be a few different steps that we need to go. I'm going to show you how to find the software on the Futaba website and then uh, specifically how to put it onto your SD card because uh, that's pretty critical. Um, one, you are going to need a micro SD card. Uh, the one that I'm using is just a really basic 32 gigabyte one. Totally overkill for the 7PXR because we're never ever going to use that storage, but that's what I had. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start off by opening up a Futaba uh, USA window. Uh, so futabausa.com. And I'm going to start off by going to product support and then we're going to go to software downloads. And what we're doing right now is we're finding the different software for the receiver and the radio. We're going to start off with the radio first, and then we're going to move on to the receiver in the later videos. Um, so we're going to go again, product support, software downloads, and then we're going to go to transmitters. This is going to list all the different available transmitters or radios uh, from Futaba. Uh, specifically, we're working with the 7PXR and the 7PX, and the most current version as of now is going to be the version 8.2. So if you click on it, it's going to download a zip file, and then you just need to remember where it's at. While we're here, uh, we're going to also get to, we're going to go back, software downloads again, and we're going to go to receivers. And the R334 SPSE is the only one that we can update. Uh, version 5 is the current version, so we'll just click on that and download it. And I already have them here in this folder. Uh, what you'll notice here is that there's like a parentheses 1 and a parentheses 1 after each of these. This just indicates that I've downloaded, downloaded it multiple times. Um, it doesn't really matter. We'll just change it anyway. You'll see, this is what you'll see. So R334, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and extract them to their own respective folders and then we're going to do the do this one here as well. Okay, so this is the receiver and this is the radio. I'm going to go ahead and open up the radio folder here. You'll notice that there's a Futaba uh, folder here. And this is where it gets really, really critical. Uh, so we're going to open up and do pay attention to the folder structure. We want to do update and also realize that they're all capital capitalized letters. 7px and then here's the main.bin and updater.bin. Both of those are going to be critical. Uh, those are the required files for updating your radio. Uh, same idea with the receiver, this one here, and then it's the r334sbs.bin. So I'm going to open up another window here, and this is my micro SD card that's already been formatted. Um, for me, it's just going to be called T7PXR. Uh, the parentheses T is just the drive letter that it is. It, that, that doesn't matter too much. Uh, but we'll notice that it starts off with Futaba. And then these are the different folders that are here by the radio. So log, model, and picture. That's specifically for the 7PXR, uh, especially the picture one. Um, that's where you update your pictures of your cars to your radio if you want to. Uh, but we're going to focus on this update folder. And here we go. So we're going to focus on the radio first. So this T7PX, open that. And that's where your main and updater.bin files are going to be. And for the receiver, it's going to be under files. And then the R334SPS.bin is there. So that's that. We're going to go ahead and move over to the other shot and uh, show you some video of it. So here we are looking at the radio. We're going to start off with a firmware update for the radio. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by turning off the radio. And then with the firmware on the SD card already and plugged into the radio, all we're going to do is we're going to press the home button and then the power button together. And that should initiate the firmware. Here we go. There we go. And it's just going to do updating until that blue line is done and then I think it's going to turn off. We'll find out. Update complete. 
and we're just going to turn it off and then we'll turn it back on again there we go so that should be your radio updated uh, let's see system menu There we go, version 8.2e, so that's perfect. Now we're gonna move over to the receiver update. So we need a battery for power, just your standard uh, receiver cable. Receiver cable, it's not gonna focus because it's on manual focus, but that's okay. And then we need a Futaba, uh, the, this receiver is gonna be the R334 SBS-E. Uh, it's the same process for the non-E version, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. So first step, uh, just to give us a little room, we're just gonna apply battery power to number four, uh, port number four. Now the trick to this is that we actually need to go ahead and put it into uh, training or programming mode. So all that I have here is just a small little Allen key. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this switch key or the switch button here and then press down gonna go ahead and plug in the battery and just keep an eye on that light there one blink we're gonna release it and then press down again there we go so now we see that uh, both the red and the green lights that are in there are now turned on I believe we are in programming mode so next we're gonna go ahead and move back to the radio and there is a small time frame on this, so keep that in mind. It might take a few tries to uh, get it right. I don't think I've ever done it right on the first time. Just have patience with it, try it again. Um, so let me get the radio set up here. Pull back. Slide this thing in. All right, so on the back here, there is a little radio port that's uh, not the easiest to get to. Let me see if I can finagle it out here. There we go. Pay attention to how your radio cable or your receiver cable is put in. That does matter here. Okay. Now, you're not gonna be able to see the receiver too well. Uh, but what we need is we need port, this S bus port, um, to attach the, to the receiver cable. So right into the S bus port. And now we gotta do this weird thing with the uh, receiver again. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start with the receiver update screen. Can we get farther back? go that will get that in focus okay so if you didn't say that uh, we're just gonna start on the home screen go to menu go to system menu go over a screen and go into receiver update now we're on the right page uh, for us to update that receiver I'm gonna do the same trick uh, as I did with that little Allen key So I'm going to go ahead and pull it, press the Allen key into the switch, and then put it into port number four, one blink, press it again, now we've got red and green there in the background, sorry it's blurry, but I'm going to go ahead and hit update now. And there it goes, first try. You'll see that that green light is flashing. It is gonna take maybe, well, it looks like it's gonna take a few minutes here, but we'll just go ahead and be patient. I'll go ahead and speed this up for you. All right, so it's been updated successfully. Uh, that's all that we need to do. We're gonna go ahead and unplug the receiver. I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna turn the receiver back on so that we can check the firmware. The receiver is on. We're gonna go all the way back to the home page. 
we're gonna go into user menu, receiver, and now that you can see that it's on receiver version five, so that's done successfully. All right, so that does it for this video. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you want more content like this. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a Sanwa video on the whole uh, Vortex D version of the speed controls that they have. They now have a new version out there, but we'll go ahead and take a look at it and uh, see if that, it might help anybody out there. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.